We are officially two weeks away from Jedi Survivor coming out, so if you've not been keeping up with the news, here's a quick and simple rundown of things you need to know before we get the game on April 28th. So let's talk about it. The first thing you need to know is the technology requirements. First, the game is only on next-gen console, which means if you don't have a decent PC, Xbox X or S, or a PlayStation 5, you won't be able to play the game. The game devs chose to do this because they wanted to be able to make a bigger and more beautiful game, utilizing the newest gaming technology to give gamers the best experience possible. And as someone who's played it, it is absolutely that. The game is also quite large, with Steam putting the game size as 155 gigabytes, so make sure you have enough storage on whatever console or device you're going to be playing on. It also sounds like they will be opening up early download of the game starting on April 25th, so if you have slow download speed, keep an eye out for that so you don't have to wait for the game to download the day of release to play it. The next thing you need to know about is the story and the time jump. This game takes place five years after what happens in Jedi Fallen Order. The book Jedi Battle Scars covers a short section of this time, but we still have two to three years where we don't know what has happened. I'm sure part of what happened in that time frame will be explained in the story of the game, but just know you're not entering into the world right after the end of Fallen Order. The characters will be more developed and perhaps even on their own missions and stories away from the unit we knew as the Mantis crew from the last game. That being said, this isn't like Metroid where each new game Cal is going to forget everything he knows and start over. Cal still retains all of his memory and the basic force skills that you learned through flashbacks in the first game and more. Next, let's talk about old and new combat. As for combat, a lot of it has been pulled over from Fallen Order, so you will start with a lot of the familiar maneuvers and force powers from the first game. But this also means that there is new gameplay things to look forward to. First, let's talk about fighting or saber stances. You will start off the game with the familiar single and double blade stances from the first game, but also a stance that wasn't fully realized in the first game, the twin blades, with a saber in each hand that will have a more slashy and quick fighting style. As you explore, you will also get two new saber stances we know as blaster and saber, which means you will get to fight with a blaster in one hand and a saber in the other, which allows a level of distance between you and your opponent, and a crossguard stance which will play much like a longsword or a heavy weapon that will be slow but have a large damage output. Next, you need to know about the force powers. While all of the basics Cal learned in Jedi Fallen Order throughout the game pull over, you won't necessarily start with a lot of the add-ons from the skill tree, but you can get them back in the new skill tree. There are also a ton of new force powers, since every new saber stance comes with its own force power, as well as getting an entirely new skill tree for the general force and new force powers. They each have their own skill trees, such as Force Confuse, which you can use to turn enemies against each other. The next thing you need to know is better customization. The next big new thing that's been added to gameplay is advanced customization of at least Cal, BD-1, and your Saber. We don't even know if you can customize the Mantis yet, but I would be surprised if you couldn't. The devs felt bad about the lack of customization in the last game, and so it was a priority for this one. From getting to change Cal's hair and beard, to changing every single part of BD-1, and being able to practically make your own droid, the customization in this game is absolutely insane. And if you're the type of person that likes dressing up your characters for every occasion, then this will probably be something you will spend a lot of time on in your gameplay, because it is extensive. The next thing you need to know is about traversal and map updates. The next big update is one that a lot of people wanted in Fallen Order, and it has to do with better traversal throughout the larger maps, especially since these maps are exceptionally bigger than the maps from Fallen Order. Not only do we now have mounts that we can use to travel throughout the worlds, such as Neko on Kobo, but the devs have also blessed us with fast travel that will make it so you can travel between every meditation spot you find throughout each world. This will make backtracking or looking for specific chests or items a lot easier than in the first game. The game devs have also added new things to the map, like custom markers and a line showing where you came from to help the maze-like feeling that a lot of people struggled with in the first game with getting lost on worlds such as Zepho. 
Next, we need to talk about side content. The next update is that there is a lot more side content to keep an eye out for in this game. While the only side content in Fallen Order was finding chests and force echoes off the beaten path and maybe an enemy, this game has a lot more side content. From side missions from NPCs, to Jedi puzzle chambers for really cool perks and items, to time skill tests or force fractures that you can find while you adventure. While these are not required to finish the main story, they are really fun, and the cool prizes at the end really make them worthwhile. You're not just getting a poncho, although I'm hoping we'll get a poncho, at least once. The next thing you need to know about is companion and AI gameplay. Along with all the new gameplay updates, there will now be companion characters that will come with you on certain missions and fight alongside you. We already have two characters confirmed, those being the new characters Bode and our favorite Night Sister Marin that will come along with you on certain story missions and will help aid you in combat. This is a big change from the first game where you traveled mostly by yourself. I'm very interested to see how the flow of fighting with the AI will go and how helpful they'll truly be in fights. You know you've played games where the AI don't do anything, but it doesn't seem like this is going to be the case. I am very, very interested about this aspect. The final thing I want to talk about that I think is important for you to know before the game comes out in two weeks is about the central hub area. Unlike the last game where so much of your gameplay just revolved around traveling from planet to planet on the Mantis and Jedi Fallen Order, there is a new addition to Jedi Survivor which makes it a lot more freeform, which is a new hub area that you can call home which is located on Kobo and called Rambler's Reach. Here you can shop in the store, as well as garden and spend time in the local saloon, as well as on your travels you will be able to find new NPCs that you can invite to the Reach that will help the community grow. This will kind of be a home planet for you while you adventure in the game, and the devs say it won't hurt to adventure back as much as you possibly can in between missions to check in the shop and get the local town gossip. This will be an area that you can go if you're in between really hard missions and you just want a place where you can go and relax for a little bit, whether that be to garden, ride around some Neko and see some beautiful sights. This will be a good spot to just hang out in between really hard missions if you just want a break. And I'm really excited about that. So these are just some basics and a quick rundown of things that I think you should know before you get into the next game or things that I just think are really exciting that will get you excited to play the next game. Let me know if you have any questions about Jedi Survivor down in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them. If you would like to keep up to date with all the Jedi Survivor news or me or my gameplay of Jedi Survivor, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And as always, thank you for watching. May the Force be with you. Goodbye!